I'm Dr. Benito Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today is a really important video. It's postmenopausal hair care and skincare. It's something we don't discuss enough. Today I'm going to be talking about when it happens, symptoms that occur, what really is happening with your hair and skin, mistakes that get made, and there are many. There are many menopausal products out there that can actually irritate the skin and make it worse and really don't do anything for postmenopausal hair and skin. So I'm also gonna be tell you, telling you my favorite products, non-sponsored as always, every product that I've ever recommended and will ever recommend on this channel um, comes from the science, from the ingredients list. Um, and I think that's really important in order to keep the channel authentic and scientific. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every YouTube video, so you can come and ask me your questions. So when you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell so you know when I'm going to be here. Plus, if you are as in love with hair and skin as I am, please do get your hands on a copy of The Skin Revolution. It's a wonderful book that I've written and published by HarperCollins, specifically for skin of color. So we're gonna be debunking lots of myths and there's lots of product recommendations in here too. Non-sponsored, of course, as well. So menopause occurs 12 months after your last period. It tends to occur between 45 years old to 55 years old. There are lots of systemic uh, changes that can happen. So vaginal dryness, chills, hot flushes, night sweats, mood changes, weight gain, and slower metabolism. However, in today's video, we're going to be focusing just on skin and hair. So what actually happens to the skin? Skin becomes loose, wrinkled, it's easier to bruise, it can feel very dry, wound healing slows down too. And hair changes mean that you tend to have less hair on your head and more hair actually around the rest of your body. And that includes more facial hair. So number one, starting off with dry skin. Why do you get dry skin post-menopause? It's because estrogen is a humectant. It's a water magnet. So as estrogen goes down, your ability to hold water in your epidermis and dermis also goes down. So this means that in your skincare, you need humectants, you need water magnets. So look for two words. One is glycerin, which is probably the most popular and most common. And the second is hyaluronic acid or sodium hyaluronate, depending on how they want to write it on the ingredients list. These are all very powerful water magnets that you want in every stage of your skincare, from your face wash, to your toner, to your serum, to your moisturizer. And with dry skin means increased sensitivity. So you are more likely to get rashes, you are more likely to irritate your skin barrier. And so this means you have to be vigilant against fragrance. Now fragrance is in 96, 95, 96 to 99% of skincare products out there. Um, it's incredibly common and it's very hard to find effective fragrance-free products. It is improving in the marketplace and it's different in different countries. And this is the reason why I've got this channel, to be honest, so that I can give you non-sponsored product recommendations that are going to be good for you and not irritate the skin. So be vigilant against fragrance in your entire skincare routine, from your wash to your toners, to your exfoliators, your serums, and then your moisturizers. So products that I love for you would be, for example, my salad gel wash from Simple, and I also like a Vino face wash. If you also have wrinkles and hyperpigmentation that you're trying to tackle, then you can use our Dr. Fee Micellar Gel Wash, which we put in 5% glycerin, so your water magnet, 2% niacinamide, 3% Centella Asiatica. There's anti-inflammatories in here too, so allantoin plus panthenol, and derm stim, which are stem cells to stimulate collagen. So this is specifically if you have lax skin, wrinkles, and hyperpigmentation. The next thing that happens with your skin is the skin thins and wrinkles. Um, and so the reason for this is that we lose collagen rapidly after menopause. You lose, the first five years after menopause, you can lose up to 30% of your collagen. Collagen. collagen is the most abundant protein in the body and it's needed for your skin, hair, nails, joints. You then, every year after that, you lose a further 2% collagen. So collagen is something that we need to be consuming because otherwise it really does affect everything. And you get these static lines that form from the tip of your nose to the mouth. Uh, we start to get jowls, so that's almost like hanging of uh, cheek and skin in this area, plus pores uh, tend to enlarge. 
So what are you supposed to do? First of all, look at the diet. We want to eliminate sugar as much as possible. And I know we all love our sugar, but sugar leads to glycation and a covalent bond forms between the sugar and the protein in your skin, which then means you lose elasticity. Uh, also, it generates damaging free radicals, which will destroy your collagen. This can happen from 30 years old onwards, so we really do need to pay more attention to our diet from 30 onwards. Plus, I would recommend you start eating more food with collagen, so things like bone broth, chicken and fish are great. Um, I drink, obviously, our Collagen Boost. This is eight grams of marine collagen. And the way it works is when you drink collagen, it's broken down into amino acids in the gut. And this then triggers your fibroblast cells that produce collagen to say, hold on, we're breaking down collagen too quickly. Uh, we need to manufacture more collagen. And now it has the amino acids and the peptides in order to do that because you've consumed it. So it's almost like a negative feedback loop that's happening. Um, and so I would say start off with your eight grams of marine collagen, probably from your late twenties onwards, and then post menopause, I would actually double it up to eight, uh, up to sixteen grams if you can. It's quite a heavy protein, to be honest. After dinner, I will make a smoothie with my collagen boost, and I will put in there Faye yogurt, so Greek yogurt, high in protein, berries, um, and ice. I'll blend it, and that's. A delicious pudding actually it's quite sweet and it fills me up all night with my grandma so she's in her 80s i told her to have one after lunch and one after dinner and um, because she again was you know facing hair thinning um, and all the issues that everybody else faces too so that's really helped her and i would recommend you do the same but start slow i wouldn't go straight into two a day because it is a lot of protein if you're not used to it start with one a day after your dessert, after your dinner, sorry, and it will keep you full all night. Topically, so on the skin, I would recommend that you use vitamin A, ideally retinol between 0.1 to 0.5% or retinaldehyde, which I much prefer. Retinaldehyde at about 0.1% is brilliant. It works 11 times faster than retinol, but with no irritation. Now imagine when you have sensitive skin post-menopause, you really don't want to be irritated in the skin. Avoid those 1% retinol creams because it's, it's just not a good idea when the skin is sensitive. So opt for a low percentage retinol plus retinaldehyde, which you will absolutely love and it stimulates collagen. So the products that I love, one is Environ AVST1 and the second one is Paula's Choice 0.3% retinol. They're in airless pumps, which is brilliant. The one that I use is of course our Dr. V antioxidant power serum. In here, I put in 0.1% retinol, 0.1% retinaldehyde, plus your vitamin C, plus vitamin E, and coenzyme Q10. So with vitamin A, you ideally want them in combination with other antioxidants, so it stabilizes it, and you want it in airless packaging. So this is what airless packaging looks like. It literally has a pump at the top, just to show you how this comes out and it has a little hole at the bottom. So every time you pump, basically oxygen is released and so you don't have any oxygen around the product, which means that it is it remains effective and this just glides onto the skin. The other retinaldehyde product that I love on the market is Avene Retrinol, which is 0.1% retinaldehyde, but it is expensive at $74 for 30 mils. I'd say apply your serum at night after your face wash and before your moisturizer in order to create a nice heating environment um, and hydrates the skin, which allows the product to work better. Another common thing to happen is acne. Now, the problem is if you have acne, but the skin is now drier and thinner, those teenage acne products are gonna to be too harsh for your skin. So I want you to focus on spot treatment. If you do get acne, what I would recommend is start off with your micellar gel wash, um, which is, you know, for, which you can get from Simple. Um, then 2% leave-on exfoliator with humectant salicylic acid. So I like Paula's Choice. Alternatively, you can use our Trio Blemish exfoliator. So this is a very hydrating exfoliant actually because we put in glycerin as well. And what you do is you want to ideally focus just on the area where you're getting the spot. You don't want to put it everywhere, you just want to focus on that one area. And you'll feel when you put this on, it's actually quite a hydrating exfoliator. 
um, but salicylic acid can be quite drying which is why when you choose your exfoliator make sure it's got glycerin in it too so you don't it doesn't dry the surrounding skin too much now on the spot itself you can use a gel moisturizer i do like super gel from face theory or you can use our pm gel which is um, part of the trio blemish range and you want this mainly just on the spot area so not everywhere so you can see this is a gel-like consistency. What I would say is for the rest of the face, which uh, can be quite dry, use a fattier moisturizer. So using a gel moisturizer on dry skin isn't going to cut it. Unfortunately, you need more occlusives, you need more emollients in order to trap water in the skin because estrogen has reduced. Also opt for one with ceramides. So I love CeraVe, for example. Or alternatively, you can use our CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer. In here it's got tyrosinase inhibitors too so if you're suffering with hyperpigmentation this is going to be beneficial now when you hit your 50s the pH of skin changes which is why you're more prone to rashes and sensitive skin which is why it's important for you to opt for fragrance free products so everything I've recommended in this video are all fragrance free when it comes to hair removal because estrogen has gone down and testosterone has remained the same you have relatively more testosterone ie hormone imbalance which is why you tend to see more facial hair however because the skin is thin and sensitive I wouldn't recommend waxing like you might have done previously what I would opt for is NDAG laser if you if the hair is still dark or opt for threading but make sure your skin you know you do stretch the skin to make sure that you know you're not getting skin trapped in there which can cut the skin um, or opt for deepilating creams so something like VEET However, beet can be quite irritating, so make sure you do a patch test on your inner arm 24 hours before. Now with hair, you may notice that you are either seeing a receding hairline or when you do your parting, that the parting looks wider than usual. So a few things I want you to check up on. I want you to look at vitamin deficiencies. Um, check your stress. Is there anything in your life that's causing you additional stress? Because at this point in time, we have different stress at different ages but also how we handle that stress has a huge impact on our hair skin. And um, any underlying conditions that are happening tend to be exacerbated when you're under stress. So if you have eczema or you have psoriasis or you know, you're going through a, a period of aging rapidly, everything tends to get worse with stress. Uh, illness uh, can also lead to hair loss. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen during COVID, this has happened. Again, it's just actually stress on the body. It's not COVID has caused hair loss, it's stress. Has caused hair loss. Check for anemia, thyroid dysfunction, and raised testosterone. So I get your bloods checked. So what do you do? I would use a thickening shampoo. I use more heatless hairstyles, especially with age. I would use conditioners that really do protect your hair strands and hair oils that protect the hair strand, not on the scalp, but on the hair strands itself. And you can use follicle stimulating anagen boost uh, type sprays on the scalp. So I'm going to show you what. I basically made, um, so this is the Dr. B hair range, which I'm very, very proud of. And actually I made this, I've given this to my grandma as well. I've made this specifically for thinning hair and damaged hair. So if you've over-treated it with chemicals or it's thinning with age, this is going to help. <laughs> In here, I've put your thickening shampoo, your conditioner, your leave-in conditioner, which will protect your hair strands from UV, from pollution, um, and from cold when you go outside. Uh, plus your hair strength, strand strengthening oil. So this you put just onto your hair, especially from the ends, mid, mid length downwards, again to protect you. Also protects you from heat styling as well, but I want you to minimize that um, during menopause. And um, your anagen boost. So this is your follicle stimulating spray that you put directly onto the scalp. Um, and it's water-based. So always make sure oil should never be put on the scalp because it can increase malassezia growth, which leads to increased yeast on the scalp, dandruff and brittle hair, which damages quickly and doesn't grow. So anything put on the scalp should be water-based and that's why your Anagen Boost Tonic is water-based. I also like The Ordinary. They do a very good serum for the scalp, which has got peptides in it and I love it too. So you can also use that. If hair loss is really affecting you, then I do love PRP. Uh, it's a great professional grade treatment where they literally take your blood, they centrifuge it, they take the plasma, and they inject it back into your scalp. It's very effective, but very painful. It can be you know, up to 100 injections, um, and you do it every couple of months, 
um, I think it's four, you do it four times, you know, once a month for four times and then every six months. It is effective, but uh, it's expensive and painful. So it depends on if it's worth it for you and only you can make that decision. Don't forget, I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video and I can't wait to see you. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you do like to be on Instagram and ask me questions there, you can do. I've got two accounts, Dr. Mita Rattan and Skincare by Dr. V. You can also ask me questions on TikTok and on our private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock family. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.